San Diego's Department of Computer Science and Engineering recently introduced Teaching Computer Science in Informal Space. The first quarter of this innovative class was taught by Sarah Guthels, UC San Diego Computer Science alumna and co-founder of the computer learning venture ThoughtSTEM. We caught up with Sarah to learn more about the motivations, intent, and results of the course on both the students and the community the class reaches. California in general is, is heading towards creating K-12 standards so that every kid in a K-12 public school in California will take computer science, but we don't have enough teachers to do it. Until that happens, we decided that the best thing to do was to bring computer science undergrads here at UCSD and give them some formal training in computer science education, specifically when they're not the full-time teacher. Um, so that's really where the informal part comes in. Informal space just means you're not in a K-12 or a university classroom with exams and standards and certain things you're trying to meet. So whether it's in the classroom or at a library, it's more about inspiring kids to just get excited about learning more. So we have about 30 students who are all juniors and seniors in the course. And the course is really broken up into three main projects. The first project is the majority of the course where you're going to learn how to design an effective lesson plan for teaching using an existing software. And so we do a lot of analysis of things like Scratch and Alice and App Inventor, and we analyze not only the technology, but also how people teach with it. Then they build their own lesson plan and actually execute it out in the community. The second project is a paper prototype. Now you're gonna design a new experience that someone, whether they're a kid or an adult, could engage in and learn computer science for the first time. And then the final project is an actual coding project where they learn how to build a very basic animation with um, block-based programming language. Those blocks change a little character on the screen. From the kid's perspective, it says make bunny hop. What my students are doing is actually writing the code behind it to translate that into a bunny actually hopping on the screen. Whether you're going to grad school, you're going you know, to start your own company, hacking together an experience like that can be really powerful. So I wanna make sure they have those skills. In general though, what they can walk away with is having an understanding of analyzing a different population of who you're building an experience for. So a lesson plan around teaching coding is still building a technical experience for a certain population, kids in this instance. And whether they're building that or they're building the next you know, iPhone app, they need to understand how to analyze that population, what are the constraints of the technology, what can they promise, and what can they actually build, and then do so effectively. And that's what we really focus on in this course. After weeks of study and preparation, groups went to schools and libraries throughout San Diego. We followed one group to a Saturday morning workshop at a local library. Our teaching project was focused on kids ages 7 to 12. They're still excited about like small little games and animations, so that's why we targeted that age range. We were really trying to teach the kids that it could be fun to code. So what we were using for our project was Scratch, and it's this online browser-based platform that allows kids to build like simple animations and games. Basically, you click and drag blocks into the coding environment. We basically just wanted to introduce them to the kind of reasoning that you need to be a computer scientist, which is logical reasoning. It helps instill like a very logical way of thinking for the kids and teach them some of the core concepts like for loops and if else statements. You know, it introduces the concepts of variables. It helps them get into the right mindset before they go into text-based programming. Because as I found out, kids are not very good at typing, <laughs> especially at that young age. And so it's a lot easier to just click and drag and then just type a couple of things in than having to worry about syntax. Um, so I think it's a great tool for kids to learn how to code. More than any technical knowledge, the most important thing that the students could walk away with uh, is the knowledge that it's exciting. Computer science is exciting and that there's fun things that they know about and they understand on their level that they can make that they might not have felt empowered to make before. So 
we have an activity where we're not using a computer and we have an activity where we're using a computer. And the activity where we're not using a computer was kind of to get students to just generally understand the idea of what computers do and how computers take instructions and use those instructions to do things that humans want. So students paired up, one student would get a page full of drawings and the other student would get a grid paper and so the student with the drawings would try to get the student with the grid paper to draw the drawings without actually seeing them. And the idea is that the student with the drawings has to communicate exactly what they want the student with the grid paper to draw, which is exactly what computers do. So the person with the pictures is like a programmer and the person with the grid paper is like the computer who has to execute the instructions. The other activity that we did was to get students to understand the concept of debugging, which is fixing programs that don't work. Um, one of the first things that we learned as computer science majors was how to fix things. That's something that you spent so much time doing as a software engineer. We gave them a program we already made, we showed them how it worked, and then we gave them a broken version of that program and guided them through the different ways that they could fix it. It's kind of like detective work. They have to try and figure out what the bug is. And also, you know, understanding that people make mistakes. But you can fix it. You can figure it out and be like, OK, this is what happened. And now we have to do this to make it work again. It's very important that students know for a fact that everyone in computer science is making just as many, if not more, mistakes as they are. It's something you have to get used to and comfortable with so that you can actually learn and grow. For me, when I did that as a CS major, it was super rewarding when I finally had the finished product that was working. And so I wanted the kids to be able to have that same experience. I think the fact that all the kids were able to work through the bugs and have a working program at the end was a huge success. And that worked out nicely because we were able to teach them um, computer science concepts like conditional statements and such without them even realizing that they were learning. So many of the students walked away happy and like excited about it and they were, they were making things uh, that we hadn't imagined that they could. The biggest success was giving them confidence enough to try it on their own. They all had smiles going out saying like, I just made my first game and seeing they can do it. The rewards of smiles and knowledge shared during the workshop are precious. Okay. But more valuable are the takeaways that will serve students well beyond this experience. One of the most interesting things that I've taken away from it is target audience is really important that you can tailor your lesson to your target audience in a very specific and useful way and really get them to engage substantially more than they would have otherwise. Uh, an example being one demographic uses mobile phones more than any other. So when you target your lesson for mobile phones, they really engage a lot because they understand how to use it, they understand the visual language and everything. So the importance of tar targeting your lessons and the power of that is one of the big takeaways. I'm not actually going to be going into software engineering. I'm going to be going into technical sales. And so I will have to actually be talking to people, teaching people things about new technology. And sometimes those people will be technical. Sometimes those people will have no technical background. And so I would say probably the most interesting thing that I've learned is teaching people in general. Um, like going through the whole process of learning how to consider all of these different factors definitely is going to help me in the future. It's a course that will teach you things that you've never learned before in any other computer science class. Hard skills are important, but if you want to be a leader, it is critical that you are emotionally, socially, culturally intelligent, and this course gives you the opportunity to practice those things. That was really one of the, the important foundational pieces to this course. It's not just coding. There are people involved and there are people that you're building for. There are people you need to sell to in terms of investments or your ideas to get a go ahead. And all of that stuff really matters if you want to make good software. That's why Google and Microsoft and Amazon heavily recruit from UCSD because they know that you know what effective technical communication looks like. While building the tools of success in its students, teaching computer science in informal space has also created the promise of sharing these tools with the community. One thing that came out of this course that I'm very excited about is that we started a student org where the UCSD students are going to continue to go out into the community and teach. We decided to start a student organization that will focus on outreach um, called CS for Each. CS for Each is dedicated in the short term to getting UCSD students out into the community to actually teach novices how to program. We have two primary goals. 
We're working on establishing a semester-long program with two high schools in the district. The long-term goals include actually contributing to novice programming tools like Scratch and App Inventor and potentially even building our own so UCSD kind of gets on the map um, in terms of computer science education contributions. So I think just everything that UCSD does around the community and the things that UCSD does in the computer science department around supporting students outside of just coding has set us up to succeed.